All right, my children and my wife are all upstairs in bed, and I am making another late night video downstairs for you. We're gonna be talking about the Mackie MC350 closed back headphones and the Mackie MC450 open back headphones. What's the difference? When do you wanna use one versus the other? And what the heck is an open back headphone anyways? Let's check them out. So let's talk about the specifications, just your general specs, your price points. So number one, the Mackie MC350s go for about $199, although they do find themselves on sale a lot for about $149. And the MC450s are $299, and sometimes they do get reduced down to $249, so watch for those sales. Um, at that price point, your spec sheet when it reads 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is the frequency range on each one of these, is I'm sure going to feel underwhelming to some people, especially if you're used to, like I've had a lot of Sennheiser headphones and even my Vmotas, and a lot of those are rated from like 8 to 40,000 or 8 to 30,000 hertz. Um, I haven't really found that terrible of a difference using the 20 to 20,000. That's generally considered the human range of hearing, and I don't think it's that bad. Um, I'm sure that there are people who will not like that as a spec, but in reality and in using these headphones for the last few months, I think they sound good and I haven't noticed that be a major downside. Uh, the ohms or the power that it requires to run your headphones, you're just going to get a standard 32 ohms here and with your open back headphones that 450s, it's actually 54 ohms. But I will say I have also used the open back MC450s um, on my iPhone and on my MacBook Pro uh, with no problem at all. I haven't needed to use an external amplifier or anything like that to get uh, good use out of them. So let's talk a little bit about why you would use each headphone. Well, the MC350 over here is really your traditional closed back headphone. Closed back headphones are what most people are going to be very familiar with. It's probably what you grew up with. And what that basically means is the back is closed. It tries to isolate a lot of the noise inside the headphone. Now this can cause a little bit of pressure to build up in the headphones. Sometimes closed back headphones are not that comfortable to wear for too long because your ears get a little bit fatigued depending on how loud you're making them and how much uh, maybe bass or other factors there are in what you're listening to. Uh, but for DJing and loud environments, this is really the only way to go. If you want a lot of bass, this is the way to go. So for a lot of people out there, a closed back headphone is going to be the more common and the better choice. If you want to try something new and you have not ever worn open back headphones before, these Mackie MC450s are a great place to start. Number one, because of their $299 price, a lot of open back headphones, especially some really high-end ones, can easily range into the $600 to $700 and even $1,000 just for a set of open back headphones. And for that $299, you're getting a decent pair of open back headphones. These things are not bad. They're very comfortable, and the listening experience will be something very different from what you've ever experienced if you've only ever used closed back headphones before. Open back headphones are exactly what they say. Okay, so you can actually shine a light right through the back side of these things. I'll do it for you. You can actually see through the headphone itself all the way to the light on the other side because it's going to give you an experience of a very spacious feel while you're listening to them. You will, especially if you're listening to proper audio, and that's either really highly encoded 320K MP3s or WAV files or master files, um, you're really going to hear things in your music that you may have never heard before if you put yourself in a quiet room and put these on. This is for critical listening. Critical listening. People use them in studios. Yes, I get it. This is a studio headphone. 
I'm telling you, you actually, if you have a quiet area, quiet room, these are super cool to use because you're gonna put them on, you're still gonna kind of hear your surroundings, but then whatever's coming through your headphone, it just sounds bigger, wider, more open. You lose some of the bass, absolutely, because you're not getting the pressure buildup in the ears like you would normally get on a closed back headphone. But what you gain is incredible details and things that you may not have heard before. What I've actually thought is super cool is I've been hooking these up to my phone and my phone doubles as my Roku remote on my TV. And I've been listening to movies with this and it's unbelievable. It's really, really neat experience to just kind of pick up tiny little details and things in something I've watched 50 times and it's been really neat. I would encourage you to try open back headphones, but just know the limitations on them. You can't take them on the subway. You're not gonna like them DJing. You're not gonna wanna take them out to a loud anywhere, but at home, if you have a studio, if you're wanting to try to hear every possible detail, that's where open backs come in so much handy and they are a much different feel and a much different sound on your ears. Um, It'll be, it'll be a neat experience for you if you've never used them. All right, so let's talk about the actual contents. Once you open up either one of these boxes, it's gonna contain, aside from the difference in the headphones themselves, exactly the same thing. That is a big hard shell case like this. Mackie actually hooks you up quite a bit here. It doesn't have a handle on it, but I really like the case itself. It's not really tiny and compact like my V Moda M100 case is, but it is a heavy duty case that I don't think is gonna have a problem being tossed around in a gear bag when I go gig to gig. The case itself is going to include, obviously, your headphones and this nice padded cutout they've got on the inside. So they fit in there really easily. And there's this pouch. Inside the pouch, you're going to find three cords. I already took this one apart several months ago. But you've got a coiled cord, you've got your quarter inch adapter which can go on either any of your cords, they give you this cord which also comes with volume control and a microphone. So if you hook it up to your phone, for example, you could use these with a phone and make phone calls with it. Not the clearest microphone in the world, but it does work. It's not terrible. And you also get this crazy 10 foot long cord. Yeah, this is a really long cord. So you get all that stuff and you also get this handy carrying pouch. The carrying pouch you can put a variety of things in. You get a wallet, AirPods, glasses, you know, whatever you want to put in there. It is pretty cool that you have a little bit of extra storage. So if you don't just want to put your cords back in here, you can always put them in your carrying pouch as well. And actually, for DJing, I have found that I like this crazy long cord here. That's probably not how everybody's attitude is going to be. Some people, I'm sure, don't want a cord at all. Uh, but I like it because I can wander away uh, from the mixer if I have to uh, get something off a table or something weird. I don't know. I always seem to be wandering around at times uh, for some reason during the set. But I don't want to take my headphones off because that would somehow be a big deal. I like the long cord. So these are the MC350s, and I think one of my biggest gripes with these headphones has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that I have a big head. Uh, the average male head is 57 inches around 57 centimeters around. Uh, mine is 60.5, so I got a big noggin. Mike Myers will be proud. This... Even at its maximum level, doesn't comfortably 
cover both of my ears. So I have to wear them either just covering one, which is how I DJ a lot anyway, or if I tilt it forward or backwards, then it covers both, but it doesn't stay on my head very well. The same problem is not said of the 450s, and I think it's mostly just the ear cup design on these, but the ear cups on this one are definitely a little bit more elongated than the 350s, and that's all it takes to now pop perfectly on my head and not have it be a problem at all. I wish these were just a little bit bigger, but as you can see, they do swivel. They swivel nicely. Um, that's actually going to bring me to my next point, which is the build quality. From what I can tell, and we're going to see how well they hold up, I've been using them for two months. They feel really well made. And that's real leather. So that's cool. I mean, it feels really good. This is really comfortable on your ears if you don't have a 61 uh, centimeter head. Uh, it's going to be probably a little more comfortable for you, but I really like the build quality. These, these are a lot heavier than some of the other headphones on the market, um, but I don't really notice it. So if that's a big thing for you, maybe you're going to be looking for a lighter pair. I've worn them comfortably for hours at a time. I tested them out uh, in the evening. I've worn them for five or six straight hours just to see what would happen. And actually, I thought they were really comfortable the entire time. And I think that says a lot about the build quality and the materials that's inside the headphones themselves. Both the 350 and the 450 have these connectors on the bottom. It's very easy. You can put this in and lock it in place with the smaller connector like this. And actually it just snaps in and comes out. And if you have other people's cords around, like my V-Moda cord here, it'll actually take that too. Just in case you wanted even more variety and more cord options. Very easy. So I found the build quality to be great on each one, the sound quality to be really good despite the 20 to 20,000 hertz, which some people might grumble about. Um, Real leather here, they're very comfortable even for long durations. The open backs have been a really neat and fun experience for me. I haven't used open back headphones since the early 2000s when I was actually in audio school um, and we used them then. I've been now DJing for 20 years, always using closed backs. So it was really cool to get another set of open backs and, and hear the difference and hear a lot of those just fun details and very spacious sounding things that I have uh, not heard for a long time. Um, but they don't advertise them terribly well for DJing, but the MC350s absolutely are a good headphone to DJ with. They're very rugged. They sound great. Um, they, you know, do the swivel cups and everything. And as long as you don't have a 61 centimeter head like me, they're probably going to fit on you just fine. So definitely give these a try. Check them out. They do put them on sale a lot. So watch for those sales. And Mackie, once again, bringing the heat with some good products. I really like these. I think they're fairly competitive for the price range that they're trying to do. Um, these go for a little more than some of the pioneers out there and a little less for the for some of the other pioneers. V-Moda makes some great headphones. I've got a video coming out on those. I've got some V100 Masters, which sound awesome, but for the value and for the contents of the box and for everything you're getting here, really, really good stuff. Mackie needs to get a little bit of a longer warranty going on these headphones but other than that these things sound awesome and they're absolutely winners so check these out try some open backs